chilling tales for dark nights. Paper Thin by Craig Groshek Narrated by Josh McDermott Henry and David were good friends. They had grown up together. Their families were close. As boys, they promised to always stay in touch and never let anything else come between their friendship. They attended high school together and then college. After graduation, they took jobs with the same company and worked together. Then Henry met a girl and fell in love. He eventually married her, and when he did, David was his best man. Throughout everything, the young men kept their promise to stay in touch and met often to talk and spend time together. Every Thursday night in particular, no matter how bad the weather was, Henry would walk the two miles from his home to David's downtown apartment. The two would head to a pub a few blocks away to play pool and talk. There they cracked jokes and complained about their jobs. They had a few drinks and watched the night grow old. One night, when Henry got home, his wife was already in bed. Look at you two, she said, turning to him sleepily. I swear, Henry, if you keep spending so much time with David, you're bound to be together when you die. She was joking, of course. The idea was ridiculous. Henry laughed at the thought of it. The next Thursday, it was cold and blustery outdoors. A chill arctic air had come in the weekend before and settled in the city. Henry shivered as he marched the last mile to David's apartment for their weekly outing. As he turned onto David Street and climbed the steps to his friend's apartment, he began to wish he had worn a heavier jacket. He shook off a chill as he rang the doorbell. To his surprise, no one answered. It was unlike David to miss their Thursday night game of pool. He rang again and again. Still. No one came to the door. Something must have come up, Henry thought. Maybe he called to let me know. He checked his mobile phone, but there were no messages. He decided to wait a bit. He waited and waited. Still, David did not arrive. Henry rang the doorbell again. Nothing. He tried the door and found it locked. Finally, with a sigh, Henry shrugged and walked home. The next day, David did not show up for work. He had not called to say he was sick or that he was out on an emergency. Henry was concerned. He asked around, but no one knew where David had gone. After work, he called David, but like the doorbell before, there was no answer. Frustrated and worried, Henry went home. That night he could hardly sleep. He could not help but wonder if something terrible had happened to his friend. For the next five days, Henry walked to David's apartment and rang the doorbell. Each day, no one answered, and each day no one called. Henry had contacted the police, but they said that they could not begin a search until David had been missing for a week. So when Thursday came again and David had been absent from work for a week with no explanation, Henry decided he would stop by the apartment one last time. This time, he searched more thoroughly. He found that someone had closed the blinds. The lights were off. Stepping into David's unlocked garage, flashlight in hand, Henry found his friend's car parked. Quickly, he searched the car's interior. To his relief, there was no body inside. Henry walked up the stairs to the front door again, then raised his fist to rap on the door, but stopped short. He thought he heard something. He paused. For a moment, pressing his ear to the door, he listened. Yes, he heard something, a faint, shuffling sound coming from inside. Henry put his hand to the doorknob and tried it. To his surprise, it was unlocked. He opened the door slowly and peered into the darkened apartment. At first, he could not see anything. David, he called out. No one answered. David, are you home? He called again. No answer. He was just about to leave when, out of the corner of his eye, he spotted movement in the back corner of the apartment. In a sliver of light streaming in through a crack in the blinds, he saw a man crouched in the corner. He shone his flashlight there. It was David. He looked pale and thin, and he looked as if he had not shaved in days, but sure enough, it was David. My friend, Henry said, 
Where have you been? From across the dimly lit room, David put a finger to his lips as if to hush him. Then he beckoned quietly. Henry crept slowly through the kitchen, past the breakfast bar, and through the dining room, finally entering the living area where David was huddled. He knelt beside his friend. David was shaking and staring in the direction of the kitchen. My friend, Henry asked again, where have you been this last week? Why haven't you come to work or answered the door? David replied, she won't let me. He pointed across the room to the kitchen. Henry looked to where his friend was pointing. At first he didn't see anything. Then he saw there, wedged in the narrow space between the refrigerator and the wall, what appeared to be a pale, paper-thin woman with long, matted black hair covering her face. Henry stared at it, whatever it was. It had its eyes closed. After a moment, Henry came to his senses and grabbed his friend by the arm. David, he pleaded, we have got to go. David nodded and with a glance toward the refrigerator to make sure the thing was still asleep, he rose slowly to his feet. The two made their way slowly across the carpeted living area into the dining room. They had their eyes on the front door when they stepped into the slick linoleum floor. They cringed at every step as their shoes squeaked noisily while they attempted to creep to the kitchen. Just then, David stopped. He pulled away from Henry's grip and took a step back, then another. Henry looked back to look David in the face and saw panic. David was staring at the refrigerator again. Henry looked back slowly and his eyes grew wide. The paper-thin woman, the chalk-faced thing, whatever it was, was staring straight at them. Its neck cocked at an unusual angle. Its long hair covered its eyes, but still they could tell it was watching. As Henry and David watched, it scraped mechanically at the wall with its bone-like fingers. Flecks of paint and drywall fluttered to the kitchen floor and formed a small pile near its feet. Then it turned its head slowly, its mouth opening a bit while it did so. Its sunken, unnaturally large eyes settled on David first. Its gaze lingered there for a moment. Then it cocked its head again and stared directly at Henry. They watched as its mouth opened wider, like a yawn, and then wider still until its lower jaw hung down to its chest. Panic-stricken, David collapsed to the floor and froze. Henry thought for a moment that he ought to grab his friend and run for the door. They could still get out if they hurried, but when he tried to move, he found his legs would not budge, and he could not take his eyes off the paper-thin woman. Henry watched, motionless, as the thing staggered out from its gap near the wall, its long black hair trailing behind it. Then, slowly, it lifted its jaw, licked its lips, and then started to drool. At that moment, Henry thought back to his wife's words. Look at you two, she had said, turning to him sleepily. I swear, Henry, if you keep spending so much time with David, you're bound to be together when you die. She had been joking, of course. The idea was ridiculous.